Welcome back to Battle for King Bottom. Not quite as I remember it. So, I actually managed to run into even more technical issues after ending the last episode. This is my third night of recording this game, of what would normally be a single setting. Thankfully, I know that this game works. So, let's get into that. And during this game, as we're playing, I'll talk about the joy that was last night. But let's watch this cutscene with actual... Robots, huh? Almost 100% speed. Like a job for him. Mermaid Man? No, SpongeBob. Him! Oh no, not him! Yes, SpongeBob. This is a job for. I love how SpongeBob says it like he, this is a thing that happens irregularly. For the pink menace! Alright. So. Apparently, wantonly switching out graphics cards in your computer is a bad idea. And when I tried to put the good graphics card back into the computer, it still thought it had the bad one in it. And I had to fiddle with the drivers to convince it that it actually had the good graphics card in it again. I was not paying attention to what I actually have to do. Oh well. This one series actually seems to run pretty well, this particular minigame. Which is amazing. Hi, sleepy times. Oh, but I have I have cans to pick up. Put the cans back. I can punch them. This is that's not my fault for not paying attention at all. I have to make a choice. Oh, whoops! Those are cans that I throw. I misunderstood. You know, it's old Patrick. Invincibility! Yes! Wanton destruction! I'm not sure how much of the computer stuff kind of goes over everyone's heads. I, I'm hoping that people don't mind me talking so much about the technical aspects of playing this and getting everything working. I think part of it is, though, that it's just a lot more bearable for me going through all the stressful stuff and the difficulties of playing this and getting it working when I actually get to talk about it and know that other people know what I'm going through in some capacity. And the thing is, I'm pretty sure most people watching this are... my oh, hanky, great. The people watching this are approximately my own age, so they probably have some idea of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these things? Maybe? Whoa! You missed Patrick. I don't really need those cans. Idiot! The can went right through them. That might actually be a frame rate issue. Sometimes the game running at low frame rates can make dumb things happen. Hot Wheels mechanics actually, its physics would depend on the frame rate. Extremely strange things could happen in that game if you had the fr if you had a really low frame rate, like I did. Somebody actually made a video series on YouTube. Not a series, but a video on YouTube of messing around with. Darn it! I'm just narrowly missing. I tried to click a single time. Didn't really work out. Ah, I keep... I'm throwing the cans, but he just keeps missing. There we go. But where they would actually deliberately lag the game in specific spots to get the... Aha! Throwing the needle! To... Get the card to uh, teleport on top, so on top of various things, which is kind of cool. Dum dum. Why does Patrick babble randomly in this game? That's not the only thing he does. It's a new interpretation of his character. Is that nature, SpongeBob? Oh, thank you for recovering my stuff. If you would be so kind, please put everything back where it belongs. I know where it belongs. Mr. Amazing, uh, Mr. Magic, uh, Mr. Trick Guy, sir. Uh, let's see here. This is gonna be an ex experience, I'm sure. Turn all of the magic props to the magic shop owner. 
drag and drop each magic prop to its correct location in the store. Place all of the magic props correctly to continue to the next game. Cool. This runs strangely laggy, but okay. I don't know where these things go. How do I know where they go? Oh, I see. I think. Like this? Okay. It's kind of weird. What goes where is kind of a weird idea for this, but okay. Crystal ball, I guess this goes on here? At least this doesn't depend at all on like timing or anything, so this is a perfect thing to play when the game's laggy. Ta da So I was kind of thinking, so I floated the idea at one point of playing some of the minigames on Windows XP. The thing is, I'd have to alternate between... One, I won't be able to do that for many games, probably. Maybe. I think. I might try... I might give it one try. Well, no. I can't, the thing is, I can't play through the entire game on Windows XP, because I can't play that one minigame, the first minigame I tried on Windows XP also. I don't know if this fruit goes. Here, maybe? Why would I, I, wanna put that, that there? I don't know why you would, Bobby. What was I saying? So, I won't be able to complete on Windows XP, so then I'd have to come back to this version anyways on Windows 98. Again, like I said, if I could figure out how to transfer my save file between the two, I'd love to do that, but I don't know. I can't find a way of transferring files to and from the Windows 98 emulator. I also kept saying Windows 95 earlier for some reason. Who, who wants the wand? Oh, probably goes with other wands. I think the reason was, when I was trying to optimize, very poorly, but when I was trying to optimize everything for recording, I have no idea where this penny would go. I just kind of picked it up at random. Um, is that a piggy bank? Aha, it is. That made a dollar sign here on the side for some reason. I was actually inadvertently using a Windows 95 tutorial instead of Windows 98 for the same emulator, same virtual machine specifically. I keep saying emulator for some reason, which is not quite correct, but I don't think most people care about that distinction here. Where'd a book go? Oh, with other books. I actually don't know where the marbles would go. I don't see anything particularly marbly over here. I'm not sure. I mean, there's just an empty spot there. What was that sound? Where would marbles go? I feel like I should be able to do this by process of elimination, but... I actually don't know where marbles would go. I don't think that has anything to do with marbles, does it? It does. Oh, I see. It's like a little marble hiding game or something. Okay, cool. Whatever. Patrick, what are you doing? It looks like a movie theater, but it's not. Oh, oh hi, SpongeBob. I was just preparing myself for bowling practice. Want to come along? Preparing yourself, huh? Ay, 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 ay. Well, what about the robots, Patrick? Oh, did you say bowling? I've always wanted to go bowling. Can you teach me? Well, SpongeBob, Bob, the key to bowling is one simple word. Be the ball. All right, Phil. Ah, uh, that's three words, Patrick. No, it isn't. Look. Did he? The ball, huh? What was he like? Looking at the captions as he said that. That's just weird. Oh jeez. That's a different interpretation of the sponge bowl. Well, it's not the bubble bowl. It's the sponge bowl, I guess. It's the. This is ahead of its time. It's predicted the movie game. And this see, this is my problem when I start talking about things instead of actually paying attention to the instructions. Crusty crew.
Oh, this is actually like a full on. Is it fun going through the ball return, SpongeBob? This is actually like a full on game. This reminds me, strangely enough, I don't really talk. Ah! really talked about this before when. Back in the day when I played. The one Lilo and Stitch game that I played on this channel. But there was a Lilo and Stitch bowling game at one point, actually. Online that I was pretty good at. There's not a lot of Leland Stitch media in existence, I don't think. Or was I actually... I don't know. I don't even remember how well... How much I was into Leland Stitch back in that day, to be perfectly honest. It's kind of weird. There are lots of different sorts of media. Oh, wow. There's lots of media where I don't really remember how much I was into it. I wonder if there's a degree of randomness in how this works, or if you can actually just consistently get a strike somehow. That's not gonna be what I want. Oh, okay. But uh, Leo and Stitch, for instance, I really don't remember how much I was actually into it. Because I, I'm looking back at it, I had a hard time remembering lots of characters' names and whatnot. For instance, I don't remember that much of the way with like specific, oops, specific episodes or anything. But I do like it. Like, I remember it fondly, I just don't really remember it. But what do I remember, I remember fondly, though. It's kind of weird. I don't know if you're really participating properly in this bowling sponge job. Also, we're just not going to comment on the fact that the robots are here instead of normal pins. Whatever. I think I got the hang of this. Can I tell what's happening on the front of Patrick's shirt? I think the idea is that his belly is just so big that the shirt doesn't fit around the front because of his belly. But it doesn't quite look that way. It looks like the shirt's actually shorter up front or something weird like that. It's kind of funny though. I mean, though, they actually independently came up with the, the SpongeBob rolling up into a ball in this game from the off game bottom for console. I'm assuming. I wouldn't think that there's any particular reason that they both happen to star SpongeBob turn into a ball. When I was talking about the SpongeBob earlier, I was actually talking about the bowling move that SpongeBob has in the off game bottom and in the movie game. But this is actually more like the sponge ball that you can become. No. Wait, do I need a higher score than that? No. I had enough. Hooray! <laughs> and it's actually in downtown too. Which is the main place you're, you use the sponge ball in that, that game. Nice. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time next episode of Let's Play Spongebob. Off bottom. We do have some similar areas, actually. We do have these are all areas that are also in console version, huh? I don't know. How, I don't know how they coordinate different versions of the same game because they're so divergent, but at the same time, they're connections, like different the same areas, for instance. Anyways, I'll probably just place all in the same order as in Balfrey Bottom on console, just because it feels right that way. So I'll go downtown, Mermaid Layer, Cup Forest, and Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. Actually, basically at the same time. I don't remember which one has the higher spatula requirement. In the African bottom console, I usually think of Flying Dutchman's Graveyard as being harder than Kelp Forest and kind of coming later, so I'll say I'll do Mermaid Layer, Kelp Forest, Graveyard, and then Chumbucket Lab. But he even says Chumbucket Lab specifically, which is what it's called in Balfour and Beacon Bottom console. Anyways, next time, Mermaid Layer. Bye, everyone.